Vagabonding prerequisites. Okay, take out your notebooks. Take notes. Vagabonding is not just moving over the earth from one place to another in some kind of conveyance. It's not about where you're going or how you're getting there or even about getting away from it all. Vagabonds may be male or female, young or old, well-heeled or broke, hip or straight, of any color or creed. No clones, please. Vagabonds are often recognizable as such, but can just as easily choose anonymity. So-called hippies are often vagabonds, but not all vagabonds are hippies. You can vagabond in a pantsuit as well as by the seat of your pants. It depends on you, not who's looking at you. The special thing that all vagabonds have in common is simply an idea. I am alive. I am here to dance. Strike up the band. I believe this urge to energy dance is designed into all human beings, but for the most people for but for most people has been overcome by fear and conditioning. There is something you can do about it, and that's what this book is all about. Let's start with the essential hallmarks of vagabonding, self-awareness, trust in life, involvement with people, and traveling cheaply. You want me to read all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. God. <laughs> you wrote it, you can read it. Self-awareness. In all your travels, there is really only one vehicle to take you where you're going, yourself. There is no experience but your own. Let go the crutch of living through someone else's experience of being guided and led. You are your own expert. The only travels I'm an expert are on my own, are my own, which may have little to do with yours. I can't be your expert, only your advisor. And I advise you to go out and become your own expert. As Scoop Nisker used to say on Radio k -San, if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own which is exactly what the vagabond does. You can choose to figure it out for yourself, suffering and rejoicing in it as you will. Your life is all for you, uniquely styled in your own vision, and like it or not, nothing can take away your power and duty to live it as fully as you can. You have the power to do this. The only limitations are those you choose and those imposed by your conditioning which masks your real freedom. As Timothy Leary said, you can be anything you want this time around. Vagabonding can start you on the road to yourself, and when you get there, you'll be home. Trust in life. <clears throat> Becoming a vagabond, believing in the dance, despite all reasons not to, is a type of religious experience. Ordinary travelers through life try to control everything in order to protect their delusions from the nasty shock of reality. What they get is uptight and paranoid. The music is stilled. By pre-planning every aspect of their trip, whether vacation trip or life trip, they think they can circumvent the unimaginable flow of natural process, also known as fate or the will of God. What they manipulate are puny imitations of reality scraped bare of energy. Vagabonds know better and book the details of their trip with an agent called chance. Giving up control of your life frees you from the illusion that you can control it. And this freedom in turn connects you into its awesome energy and unlimited potential. Trusting the world, not getting hung up in past or future, dissolves the illusion of being separate from it and helps to alleviate the all-too-prevalent schizophrenia of modern existence. The way you begin to trust is by beginning to trust, sensing that you have to wiggle before you can walk, that you have to believe before you can leave. Involvement with people. As a member of the most fascinating animal species, you will naturally get your best kicks from others of your own species. Pets are fun, plants and trees give us oxygen, places make nice patterns on our eyeballs, but nothing really compares to people as instruments for making that music in your soul. 
If you let your strings be touched by myriad other pluckers and even motherfuckers, you won't lack for music in your dance. Let your trip be changed by whom you meet and whatever happens. Accept that you have the power just by being to enrich the lives of others and to change inner and outer and other events. This is the vagabond mystique, the ability to function closely with other lives and energy, energies which refine and redefine your own. Traveling cheaply. An old rule of traveling says the less money you spend, the more you will know the people and places you visit. And I would add, and the more you will know yourself. The luxury traveler and his poorer cousin, the common tourist, are constantly encased in gleaming metals and other costly materials, preened mechanically by resentful lackeys, surfeited with overpriced, denutrified victuals, treated to vulgar and expensive entertainments, intentionally or unintentionally lied to, sneered at even by themselves, led like sheep through attractions that bore them. This is not travel. This is butchery of soul. This is how money, an artificial form of energy, distorts reality for its own ends. To travel cheaply in any form at all weakens the power of money to trick you into phony realities that profit only the travel industry. The tourist is a pseudo-traveler, an unwitting sucker in servitude to a clack trap of travel agents, businessmen, corporations, and governments. On the one hand, who cares? Let everyone do as they will. Unfortunately, the tourist is also a human locust, merely a pest in small numbers, but all too often a pestilence that devours everything, leaving only a sticky plastic facade in place of whatever real thing existed before. Tourists corrupt the economy of the places they visit. They trample what is delicate and deface what is monumental. They flout the traditions and insult the natives. Although they leave behind a bad taste, the natives put up with them because of the prosperity they bring a prosperity that sacrifices public interest and private integrity. Tourism destroys what it embraces. Whatever it was that created the original traveler's interest is eventually gutted, turned into an imitation of itself that further trivializes our experience. In the lyrics of the Eagles, you call someplace paradise, kiss it goodbye. The damage also extends to the tourists themselves, whose frantic activity masks their sorrow at failing to find some soul-satisfying rewards for all the money they're spending. The alternative is to acquire some measure of vagabonding consciousness. The goal of the vagabond is always to make more from less, to discover that any place can be magical. You don't disrupt anyone's economy, especially your own. You keep a low profile, living as the locals do, or with them, if possible. You're interested in learning about the spirit, spirits of the places you go and the stories and styles of the people who live there. Everywhere you go, you meet partners in your mutual dance, people who understand and share what they have. You offer and ex expect friendship, which is your stock in trade. You don't feel guilty that you're trying to travel cheaply that you are who you are, not a big spender from the beast. On the contrary, consider yourself an intelligence agent, encouraging sanity and soulfulness by example. Bring enough money to fuel and house your body, but don't sell your soul, except maybe for love's old sweet song. <laughs>